New York, San Francisco, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Hey. No. Right. You know what I just thought of you guys? There's this thing that, that they say about Italian mothers, right? And their sons, they, they have this relationship. Careful. They have this relationship. Their, their Italian sons are, and their mothers are too close so that the, when the men go out in the real world, they're ill-prepared for relationships outside of that sort of overclose Italian mother thing. And I'm thinking like, wait a minute, the Fed has babied all these by the dippers. <laughs> he almost spit his beer out. <laughs> <laughs> Babied all these by the dippers. Oh, I so just didn't know that's where he was going with it. Like, right, like, I'm like, all right, so we're going to start this off with some other shit. All right. right, right like I had fact. no idea he was going there with it. That's That was that was genius right there. <laughs> like, No, for real. Like These people, the by the dippers, are ill-prepared for relationships outside of where the Fed has your back. Because oh. they, they stepped into this market that way. And yeah. welcome, everybody, by the way, to oh, yeah. Happy, happy hour. hour. I'm your host, co-host, <laughs> Ron Ronchero Friedman with Chris Katie and our special guest, the man himself, Sanglucci, all the way down in Trade Space, Puerto Rico. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on? Gigi, you out of here? All right, man. Um, what's going on? What's going on? Happy to be here. I got my Malaya here. This is the... This is the traditional beer in Puerto Excellent. Rico. What's it called? Oh, Medallia. It's called Medallia. Yep. Medallia. Yep. Okay. Medallia. So, uh, yeah, man, it just it just works. I started drinking at like three. I haven't. I, I don't drink that much, that much. So you know, I'm a little. I'm feeling a little nice right now, man. I'm on my third beer here. Did it Did it help your trading today? Um, well, I started at like three. So after three, I had already closed out my <laughs> okay, my good. Amazon and everything. So, I mean, I can't believe this. I At the same time, I don't want to say that, right? Because we go through these periods all the time and they hit us and we're like, it's like, it's like people who live in Boston and New York. They forget what the winter is like every single year. And then when it comes, they're like, fuck, man. Ah, I, I don't like it. It's too cold. I, I can't believe this shit, man. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're up and down hundred handles like it's nothing, man. Like it's like it's like it's a nice one or two points on spy. So it's just wild, man. It's wild. It, the office is a lot of energy, you know. So and then the good thing is, is that if you do mess up, and you got your head on right, you can make it back quickly, very quickly. You can make it back. You can make it back. So you know, there's there's some some opportunities out here. I have friends who gun a beer when they've got a big position on. No way, man. Yeah. No way, man. Yeah, way. Just to, they say to calm their nerves. They live in New York? Yeah. Do they got so, that IV? They got that IV thing hooked yeah. up? No, no, no. They just like, <laughs> you remember when it was going up forever and ever and ever, and we were always riding these, these big short positions, and, and you're just waiting for it to crack, right? Mm -hmm. And these guys, and it would never go up fast, it would only grind up. So these guys would be like, I got to calm my nerves and gun a beer. Wow. And, and, are uh, we are we still talking about two thousands here, or are we talking about the nineties here? What no, we we're talking? talking about even recently, like into the more recent highs. Damn, that was a joke. I thought you were going to take offense to it, but I guess <laughs> no, not. no, <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, no. Someday, someday that burden will be on you. <laughs> right. Indeed, indeed. You know what the other thing is? We keep saying, like, at least for me, like, I started, I started trading when I was what, twenty three, twenty four. I even remember being on stage telling people that I'm not going to do this shit when I get older. You know what I mean? Like I was 27 saying that shit. Arrogantly. What else going to do? Like arrogantly, you know, yeah. like telling everybody like I'm not – I don't want to do this shit when I'm old. I want to I want to take my money and get the fuck out. That's what I would I, tell everybody. I on stage in front of all kinds of people. Yep, and here cool. I am at what? 30, 30 – ¿Cuánto año? ¿Cuánto año tengo? 38, 37. I'm, I'm taking a guess. I don't know. How old are you? He's 26, friend. He's, he's, he's what, you got to ask Francie how old you are? What is, does he write this shit down? No, what? man. After 30, you stop, you, stop, you stop counting. I mean, you know. <laughs> you stopped counting 30 years ago, man. I said, I don't even know how old you are. <laughs> but anyways, I would tell people arrogantly, like, I'm never going to do this shit anymore. I'm going to take my money. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get out. And then here I am. What? 38, 39. I'm still so you doing see, this shit. You see how the game's changed. It's not the same game. Well, what are we talking about? In what capacity? 
if the game has gotten infinitely infinitely more complex than it was. So you're saying ago. the complexity keeps us in. That's what you're saying. I'm saying that the yes, human human beings generally crave sophistication and complexity, and this game is increasingly sophisticated and complex. Damn. But it's it's not just it's not just this. It's most of everything, right? Like you see that in computational. Uh, careers you see it in, in all sorts of stuff but yeah i'm saying yeah, that right. the re the reason that you're addicted to this is that it's getting more complex and it's yeah. getting more sophisticated i read this primer on quantum computing today somebody had sent it to me and mm -hmm. they were like you know the original way of computing computers will parse through bits you know zeros and ones and they're like the quantum computing creates the qubit and the qubit is some derivation or some multiplication of the the regular bits and that's how we're going to be able to exponentially you know increase the sort of computing power and again it was like, it was like a it was a white paper or whatever like i didn't read through the whole thing that much less understand what the fuck i was reading but you're right you know everything slowly gets more more <laughs> complex here and imagine if we have this quantum computing this whole web 3 is going to take a it's, it's going to take on a whole new life you know Lucci, you talk to me about that. Help help me understand Web3. And is it Web3 or is it Web3.0? Is it going to be ruled mm. by NFTs? Is it going to be ruled by the companies that take the VIG off of the transactions? Or we don't know, man. We don't know. There's so many different ways that you can <clears> look <throat> at it. And there's so many different ways that you can kind of get in. I'll give you an example, right? You know, one of my companies... Um, is a is a is you know is in the cannabis industry, and you know in order to have a different interaction with your customer, look at customer loyalty programs for example. Like if you go to Macy's right and you mm -hmm. get a, they're like the only customer loyalty they have is, hey, sign up for this damn credit card, put all your shit on this credit card, and then we'll give you a twenty five percent discount, right? Yep. That's a customer loyalty program as it exists today. Okay. Imagine now. If you could do a customer loyalty program on a web application where you where you either have access to an NFT, which makes you a member of said community, and now you can now there's a whole experience, right? You can talk to other people who are members as well. You can walk in a virtual store. You can walk into a virtual store and you can exchange your your or, or use your NFT to purchase goods and get uh, you know, get discounts automatically, you know, so it's a whole different way of interacting with your customer. If you think about it in the future too, it's like, you never have to go to a Zara anymore, right? Like you take out that whole business model completely. Like I don't have to pay for monthly rent at this bullshit mall, 20, 20,000 a month just to get all these eyes or whatever. I don't have to do that anymore. You could go to your virtual store, pick a mannequin that looks like yo fat ass, and and try on some clothes on on whatever mannequin that fits your fat ass, and and then you go you could buy the shit you buy the shit and have it shipped to you. That way you never have to go to the mall. And again, like we already do this stuff anyway. It's just the natural progression of such, and that's just one small use case. NFTs are a way to access a Web three. It's just a way to access a Web three, or a wallet is a way to access you know Web three. So. That's all the shit is, man, if that makes any sense. I don't even is, know if I explained it that good. Is, is Web3 also tied with the meta world or not? Shh, it can be. It can be. Okay. It doesn't have to be, but absolutely it can be, you know? And the metaverse <clears throat> is just another – we love renaming shit that already exists <laughs> and repackaging it in a fucking Ritz cracker box and being like, yeah, this is this is the new shit, you know, this is the new flavor or whatever. Like we we all already exist in the freaking metaverse. Your kids, all of our kids. I don't know why I'm saying your, because I have kids. Chris, do you have kids? I uh, no, never married, no kids. This man is a fucking. He's like a. You don't have to be married to have kids. He's. <laughs> yeah, but he made sure to mention that first. He's like a. <laughs> He's like, a, he doesn't have any kids. Why did you choose? Let's just, let's just go that way. Why did you choose not to have kids? I'm very curious. Come on, man. Don't, 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 don't do that. Why did I, you choose I, not I, to have kids? I would say that I must not be a catch or my competition offered a better option to the people that I was. That is the most with. depressing fucking answer <laughs> I have ever heard. That's it. I'm getting another beer, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's uh or you could say that i have data that says i'm not a catch <laughs> that is such bullshit man you're making a conscious effort to not have a child and for which i either but you know and again everybody it's a, it's it's our choice right now we can do what we want um yeah. so uh, well no it's a, hey, wait kids, time out time out it takes two right and i chose wrong interesting wow that's some real shit Ronch, you're gonna have to unpackage that on a later, you know, on a later happy time. hour. Yes, yeah, on a later happy hour. On a, <laughs> you know on a second pier. Yeah. <laughs> He's all lonely in there. Look at that office, man. Look at that right. office. <laughs> Shit. Dude, he had a stalker in there a few weeks ago, hanging out right behind him on that column. We thought for sure he was going home, and we'd never see him again that night. <laughs> hey, hey newsflash: they're opening up this whole place, uh, American Express World Headquarters, all Goldman. Everybody's coming back. Uh, oh, wow. Starting March 1st. So you're not going to be there all alone and shit. I, I don't know about here, but yeah, everywhere downtown is, is opening wide open uh, March 1st and March 15th. Also, no, you don't have to show a vaccination card. You don't, show, you don't have to show anything. <laughs> no masks. No oh, masks. New York's back, baby. Yep. New York's back, <laughs> baby. <laughs> And it's, and it's 65 degrees here right now. <laughs> so to really? finish my point, yeah. to finish my point, our kids, they already live in the metaverse. They sit there and play Roblox. They sit there and play Minecraft. They sit there and play all that shit. Those are just the, the, the first versions of metaverse applications that are going to grow, you know, and, okay. you know, so it doesn't Web3 doesn't have to be tied directly to metaverse, but it is another application, so to speak. Yeah. Mm. You know, any other questions? Yeah. Presley, Presley yeah. is saying, Lucci, have you played any of these games? The, the crypto games are pretty addicting too, you know? Um, but here's the other thing. With some of the crypto games is like they'll roll out an NFT collection. Like how many of you guys are watching Invisible Friends today right now? Invisible Friends just dropped. And the prices for some of these, uh, for some of these NFTs are ridiculous. But anyways, they'll pre-sell an NFT collection and they'll raise $10 million, $20 million, $5 million or whatever. And then they'll spend that money. They'll say in their roadmap that we're gonna spend this shit on the game. Now, some of the most popular games, they haven't even come out yet. They haven't even come out yet, but that's all the appeal. They need to get you to hold the NFT or hold the token or hold something. Now, in a crashing market, there are some fucking problems here. There's some problems. So a lot of projects got wrapped up in this shit, and that's what happened in 2017, 2018, you know, and the, and the time before that. So anytime we have this big boom and bust cycle in crypto, you know, that – that bust is 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 coming around the bend you know is, is nft just ethereum based no or okay no no so you can build out an nft platform using any blockchain you know so ethereum it could, it could be one solana is now one polka dot now has their own nft uh, marketplace there's there's many other blockchains that you can access an nft marketplace mint nfts and all that kind of stuff so all you need is a is the root code of a blockchain here, and you can essentially put NFTs on that blockchain. Now, and look at it this way. Look at it this way, right? A blockchain is just is just a way to record something, right? It doesn't have to be transactions per se. Like right now, it's just transactions, wallet transactions from one place to another. Eventually, it's going to be legal contracts. It's going to be... What you know, fucking divorce contracts. It's gonna be you know whatever whatever you could think of. You could technically digitize it and put it on the blockchain. A mortgage. Uh, uh, Trading the post. A fucking uh, exactly an education course. Uh, uh, you know whatever it is, they'll find a way to put it on there. And if they find a way to put it on there, now there's 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 more trackability to it. You know there's less less. What do they call? It? They use the word fungible or whatever. They, you know, you can you can you can fake it. Less scam, so to speak. But again, that's still bullshit because there's still plenty of scams. So, right. You know, I don't so, know. This is it's a new world, man. So it is tell a new me world. about tell me about security of all of that. Then how does okay. how does that work? So great is a great. Again, they say it's unhackable and decentralized. And those two statements alone, which is what you know pushed everybody to crypto in the first place. It's technically a fucking lie. It's technically a lie. There is, there's, there's not the decentralization yet. And mm -hmm. then the number two thing of, of, of the scams where it can't be hacked 
is bullshit. People are getting hacked left and right. I mean, uh, uh, one of the largest NFT marketplaces, OpenSea, got hacked the other day. Somebody walked away with $200 million in, in NFTs. Whoa, wait, when did OpenSea get hacked? This was like last week. This was like really? this week. This was like this yeah. week. Wow. This week, you know? And Two again, that company is already valued, by the way, at $6 billion. $6 billion fucking dollars. Already. Already. And by the way, there's new NFT marketplaces that popped up left and right. And all you know what people do? You know what people do? And they're the fucking greatest traders in the world. They'll sit there and look at the market cap of OpenSea and be like, all right, uh, this shit should be worth as much as OpenSea. Let's buy it now. And that's how these things will fucking move, man. You so it's just it. a gold rush. So how, how, how many different companies are out there like OpenSea? There's probably another – and again, this is just off the top of my head, five or six other marketplaces that I've actively been involved in. And then easily has to be another 10 or 20 on the table. When easily. you say been involved in, do you mean yeah. you're an early stage investor? What do you mean? Some of those are then a, some of them I'll, I'll watch the I'll watch the coin when it drops and then see if I can rip a trade off of. And then some of them, you know, lucky enough, they're, they're you know, the futures will get posted somewhere on FTX or another DeFi exchange or something like that, where I can, I can try to get a trade off, you know, something like that. So, you know, new crypto games will come out left and right. And they'll have that initial, they'll have that initial spike. Everybody will get trapped. Shit will sell off to nothing. And then you'll get some pops. You'll get some pops. You, sometimes you'll get some shorts off, you know, some of them are pretty, pretty solid, man. All right. So I'm, I'm reading in, in the chat here, somebody saying, uh, Jensen is saying open see themselves were not hacked. It was a scam that people. It was clicked. a phishing so, scam. My bad. It was a phishing scam. Okay. So, so it wasn't the, the company didn't actually get hacked. Was it individuals wallets that did through a scam or. Jensen hook us up, man. Hey, Hey, Luch. First rally always fails. You ever hear that? Man, shut up with that, man. Would you. Can we you ever stop? hear that? No, no, no. For real. Like you're saying like the, the coin gets a huge run then oh, everyone yeah. gets trapped yeah and, and then you get the pullback right of and course. that's and that's where you step in right and so for years and years and years guys on the floor used to say first rally always fails first rally always fails that's all i'm I, saying yeah no i've heard it i've heard it and then off the fomc minutes too they'll yep. they'll adapt that and be like the first <laughs> move is always wrong yeah first that, move is always wrong works. always wrong i trade for always wrong but then, I don't know. Sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment, do you do you actually remember those things or do you get caught looking at price? That's my question. Do you get caught looking at price like a chump or do you remember some of that shit? You know, you're always using that expression when you've missed the first move. Absolutely. <laughs> God, it's happening so much now. You know what? Like the, these pre-market moves, overnight moves too, they're getting me so biased too coming into the day. Yeah. And then once you once you hook onto that bias, it takes a while to let go. Like Ranchero, I got smoked this morning because I'm long everything. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then we we rallied back in the middle of the day. So I'm like, all right, maybe I'm still right. I didn't lose my ass. Maybe I'm still right. So I'm still holding. Oh, like I no. still have my long bias. Right. I still had my long bias. And then I believed once you that, for a, for about five minutes, Lucy. Once that I Shopify happened, yep. Ranchero. Once that Shopify <laughs> happened, and there was no follow through, I was like. This is it. This is a yeah. wrap. This is a wrap right here. And, yeah. and all I need to do is flip. And that's really all I needed to do. But now the yeah. question is, is how long do you remain biased before you can, before you can hit the flip? Luckily, that's why we roll. Today was the, exactly that. True. That's why you 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 know you got what you got. <laughs> <laughs> you shorten shorten the time duration between when you recognize you're wrong and you reverse. Yeah, well, we, you you have to you have to be able to be good at that. You have to make that a skill, because if you don't, you're you're just you're going to take bigger losses. Then the emotion is hurt, and you can't re-engage until it's too late. Exactly, exactly, and that's the worst part, especially when you're trading the options too, because you're sitting there, there's oh. like, oh. You see it's, them front run everything they know. It's and brutal. It's brutal. It's, it's brutal. brutal. That's why I was so confident on that Shopify 2 run. I saw because I saw them front running everything. But of course, like at that at that time, I didn't know it was a fucking I didn't know it was a fake out. My option went from I bought nine bucks. There was a $16 bid on it. 
So I'm looking at it like, all right, if we rally, I'm sitting on I'm sitting on gold right here. You know what I mean? And boom, they yanked it in, in maybe a minute. Bid was like 11 bucks, and there was no way you were ever going to get that 16 bucks back. Yep. Ever. Yep. Ever. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Indeed. Uh, um, hey, by the way, nice call. Well, the other day when you were like, you're getting short right up there at the highs. That was great. And you said you were back, right? How did how long did it take you to go from out to back? <sighs> man, I, I would say months, man. I would really say months, Katie. Yep. You know, because... You and me were talking this shit in November, December. Like, I remember, you know. It and it hard. hurts. It hurts yeah. to look back at those moments and be like, and then look at this shit. You still have, there's still so many layers of stuff that you have to get over. You have to get over where your mind was three months ago, four months ago. You got to get over where you could have been, where you feel like you should have been. You got to get over all that. <clears> and, and in a sense, it's like life. You know what I mean? It's the, the easiest way to get through it is... Let go of all this shit, you know, and and that's always the answer. It's just difficult to get there, considering we're traders, man. We tie ourselves to our performance. Right. That's also another thing you have to let go, you know. So I had to do all that kind of mental work, so to speak, and then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks ago, boom, it just clicked, and then it was just like, what the fuck was wrong with me for months, you know? But that's Welcome the natural back. path of things. I don't, I don't know. Thank you, man. Thank Welcome you. I back. appreciate it. I know. It's right. It's a long road back, right? Fuck. It is. But it gets shorter every time, though. It gets shorter every time. This is the difference, I feel like, with Ranchero. Ranchero's built something that accounts for his own emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, that's that's. I feel like that's where every trader should get. It's just difficult to do it through your own means versus automation right but then if you look at the automation side <clears throat> you know how come ranchero for example how come you haven't gone full on automation obviously you fucking thought about it uh i've i've thought about it number one i'm i i, I just have okay so i have the idea i'm not somebody who knows how to program that so i've got to take all that shit out of my head whiteboard it and get somebody who can right. see it from my point of view and program it that way but right? you could do that if you really wanted to you could do that Right. Yeah, yeah. You could do that. We, we any one of us could do that right now. And <clears> and <throat> we are, let's just say, for purposes of this conversation, whatever, considered some of the better traders out there. You know, so if you think of all these retail traders out there who have the same behavioral issues that we do, same emotions, the same issues and all that kind of stuff, you know, there still is this big impediment towards going automation towards going to full automation, which begs the question, number one, can your strategy be automated? And then number two, how the fuck do you even get there, right? Who, who has the means to either pay somebody? And then even if you found the right person, you still got to tell this person what the hell to automate. You still got to right. do a year's worth of work yep. of being like, nah, man, nah, we got to tweak it. 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 You know okay. what I mean? So it's not that easy. It's not that easy. The, the capital needed, required, and the time required to go full automation, it's still pretty big, man. It's still yes, pretty man. big. You'd yeah. figure in 2022, it'd be pretty turnkey, man, but it ain't. You know, you know what else, Lucci, is that um, I, actually, I actually enjoy the process. I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and it's like solving a puzzle. And I enjoy doing that every day. And, and when I don't or when I want to take a break from it, I get on a plane and I go somewhere and I shut it all down and I forget about it until it's part I of your get process. back. It's part of your process though because you've been there enough, man. Most people, yeah. you know what they do? They sit there, they wake up every morning and they kill all their routines. They kill the gym. They kill everything. They just go to the market depressed as fuck. Believe it or not, that's 80 – to me, I believe that's 80% of traders, right, who are already in a shit situation. They come to the market depressed as shit. And they, they sit there and punt around. They sit there and punt around. That's most traders to me. You know what I mean? If that's the case, damn. You know Howie, I mean? Co Howie Cohen used to say, it's like being in a bad marriage. Trading. Oh, 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 don't say that, man. Right? Because it's, 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 you have to go every day and deal with this thing that you may not like. I've, I've See, been, now I've we know why he's not married. Marriage. Now we know why it. he ain't. Now we know why he ain't married, and now we know why he doesn't have any kids. <laughs> I look, I See? worked on the floor. There were five thousand guys. Five thousand guys, right? And about <sighs> six girls. And then, <sighs> so, that's what was, I was talking. 
I met a couple. I met a couple girls in Chicago that worked in the pit. You know, back in the back in the nineties or, or, mm-hmm. or the eighties, and they would tell me all these stories. You know, some of it is crazy, man. If you think of it now to where we are in twenty twenty two, like imagine having that environment still exists to this day. You remember that story that came out in London? Like they still had those kind of markets or whatever, where you know they would still have stories of of people getting sh- absolutely shit faced sitting on the floor yelling at each other this happened like 3 years ago or whatever this was like the last bastion of of that place that existed in the 80s and 90s man yeah it's the uh, LME it's where they trade copper there you go and um anyway hey back to the automation thing the human yeah, being yeah. the human being can optimize faster than a programmer you think is, so yeah interesting and I think that's what Ranch has, Ranch has basically got all these optimization skills. So do you with the ability to reverse. Like a program is going to be really stratified. And, and in this environment, which is increasingly sophisticated, can you imagine we have to constantly, it's almost like you need machine learning or artificial intelligence just to keep up with the modifications in your program. And, that's and funny it's super you fast. Say that fast too. Learning. Right? Like, I mean, there, when you say that, Chris, I think about like that trade that I was trying to ride shotgun on Lucci, Lucci with today on, on that shop. And I was like, I, I, I sat there and I kind of went back and I started looking at where, okay, we, you know, if, if I'm going to get faked here, where's that going to happen? And I'm doing mm-hmm. it real time. And I'm, you know, I'm clicking around and I'm using the techniques that I use. And I'm like, within 30 seconds, spit out a number. And I was like, right. Hey, if this, if this breaks, it, I'm out. it's not happening. And that number came, it hit we blew out and flipped and went the other direction and boom off to the races. We went to the other direction. I don't know that, a, that, that a program, if that I write, I don't know that it can do that. I, I, or if it can, I just don't have confidence that it can. It probably wouldn't take that trade to begin with. It would take, it would take, fair. you know what I mean? Fair. It probably wouldn't take That's that fair. trade to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Cause you and me, we're punt around, we'll punt around, we'll pay for the punts. You know what I mean? Yes. Like we'll pay yes. for this inf- information, yeah. you know, a program. It can, yeah. You're right, man. It can't, can it do that? I don't know, man. This apple is at 160. Yeah, Yo, something just something gross. just hit. Something just hit, man. Yeah. This shit is pop. gross. We're down on no, we're just we're just oh. melting. Yeah, you, I was yeah, I'm not surprised. Like you saw that sweep that came in and I was I was trying to tell those the, the traders in the room. Matt was the one that posted it. It was a, it was a mil, um, million and a half or a million 1.6 1.1 uh sweep on on calls and I was yeah. like that's I was like Look at the screen. That is that is not that is somebody who either made a mistake right. or is about to lose their fucking job because that <laughs> that is not going to work. That trade is not going to work. Sure. And and again, this goes to you know just to extrapolate what you're saying out. Like there, there's so many firms that are doing flow now, man. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen this, man. But yeah. I have seen over twenty, and all they do is they 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 copy somebody's API somewhere. Yep. And they just pour information out. And when you – people don't realize there's trillions of dollars moving in the options market. Fucking trillions. And they think that when you see these orders or whatever, like you – you know, they're tradable alerts. They're like, <laughs> right. all right, somebody bought some shit. All right. And yep. they don't think there's any layer of thing that has to happen outside of it. And again, that's why we love our boy Jesus because he's our guy. He's he's the filter. He literally is the filter. So the the edge is in the filter of all of that shit. The edge is not okay, yeah, you're trading off flow. You know, and and there's so many people that base their strategies now off flow and they don't even understand what the fuck it is or, or how even- the fuck to use it. Or even the mechanics behind it, right? Is that, you know, exactly. you're seeing one leg of a multi-leg piece. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have no idea what the what the ultimate intent or strategy or money is behind what you see come across the screen. Crazy, crazy. crazy. Yo, um, how many beers do you guys hit before you, like, break the seal? <laughs> Three. Three? All right, because I'm at like two and a half, man. I gotta, I gotta, I don't know what's going on here. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old. Oh. I don't know what's happening here. I'll be right back. He's got okay. a tap for a second. I mean, that's why I don't drink a lot of beer, because that's that's what happens. For sure. <laughs> hey, did you survive today? I thrived. 
Oh, you did well. Good. Yeah, I mean these 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 types of days are are the the kinds of days that I I really um, do well in, and it's just because I think there's been a sea change until the next change comes around. I've I've been skeptical of every pop this entire way because of how I read things and my read for now is correct. So it's, it's working. You know, um, yeah, good on you to be flexible. Good for you. It's tough. I mean, it, it, as, as someone who's, you know, led from the short side, it, the only way we've survived is, is buying them back. But every time you buy them back here, you're too early now. Yeah. And so it's just like, you end up sitting here going, Jesus, you know, I wish I didn't buy anyway. Um, <laughs> all the, to all the people out there who are having a tougher time, there's definitely, it's a, I have never seen something like this in, in my 40 years of trading, except maybe right before the trade center uh, where somebody knew something. The, the market trades to me like somebody knows something or, or a risk manager has come along and decided that they need to tighten up, snug up in, in case of a of margin rates going up on some sort of geopolitical thing. Right. And uh, so... Th- they're, they're forcing people to, to get smaller, right. To rein in the risk. And, 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 you know, as we both know, you can't fight with the, with the, with your clearing firm when the margin, when the margin people come, you just say yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah. There's, there is, there's no negotiation. They just. Right. Right. And, and those, so those numbers can change. Yeah. And, and so maybe that's, maybe that's a little of what this is, Uh, but it doesn't smell. Have you seen? I mean, so the uh, to me, it feels like just just I I try to go big picture and then boil it down. I mean, twenty percent is what three eighty five, three eighty four ish on the spy, right? And we haven't had like this type of a march down to an area like that in forever, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't. I mean, will people not panic? Or at twenty percent, will people look at it? And say I'm 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 coming out of this. Down slow, like today, seem managed to me. Yeah. As though right, every every move that we've lived through in the past, even the COVID sell-off was fast. It was right? fast. It was sharp. Right. So so change that occurs slowly is more permanent than change that occurs quickly. Yeah, right? it's going to take. It, it, that's yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that this environment stays like this for a while, and and it will likely not come back the way that it has, it will come back in a different way, I think. Frank here said uh, market almost tripled off COVID lows and queues, so it could be a lot more to go. Yeah. You know, if you look, just pull up Shopify, pull up Shopify, oh. Or pull, oh. up, pull up Zoom, <laughs> pull, pull up Zoom or pull up Shopify. If you look at those two things and there's like, tons of others that look like that. Firm, Upstart, anything that was good, anything tied to the metaverse right now, like MTTR, and, you know, Facebook, any of these, they're, they're all pummeled, right? They're all just pummeled right now. Pummeled is not even the word. The word. Right? It's, it's not even the word. The word. Not even eviscerated? The word. How's eviscerated? This shit is, okay, I, let's, let's do this, right? Um... One of my boys, his his uh, his well, his ex now. Damn man, everybody's breaking up too. His ex now was was a was a higher was an executive fucking Peloton, right? Mm-hmm. And Ooh. and at the height of this shit, they live in New York. You know what I mean? They live in New York. And what the Peloton people were doing, I don't know, unbeknownst to a lot of people, until they started hearing news. That Mr. CEO was, you know, buying all the shit and, and, you know, all the news started hitting the reels. But way before all that, they're up in New York at the most expensive spots with the most expensive people. You know what I'm saying? They're throwing the most wildest parties. They are building like the largest hype beast I have ever seen in my entire life. And everybody's drinking the motherfucking Kool-Aid. Every single person up in that company was doubling, tripling, quadrupling down, putting the whole 401ks, everything into Ooh. Peloton. And we're Ooh. talking $80, $90. We're talking all that shit because that was the height of it. I mean, I don't, I don't even have to end this story. You know how it fucking ends. I, I really don't even have to end this story. And now, you know what I mean? They, they I don't know why, but the, I, for whatever reason – my friend and her recently, you know, whatever, separated. But there was some losses, man. 
yeah. there were some losses that are pretty, you know, it's nothing to sneeze at, man. No, tangible it's, losses. It's, it's tangible shit. Yeah. That changes lives, that changes conversations, that changes plans, that changes futures. You know what I mean? So yeah. while while all of us are looking at shit going up and down, people's lives are attached to these ups and downs too. You know, and then yeah. folks here talking about Kathy Wood or whatever, you know, say what you want about her. She did what she did and people do shit like that all the time and they get to where they're at and she... She's a monster, man. She's a fucking monster. And, and you know, for however year she had up at the top, of course, you knew this was coming. Everybody knew this was coming. The writing was on the wall, whether you wanted yeah. to believe it or not. What's more interesting is the aftermath. Like, it's what happens when shit's going down. And we're in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she revised her investor letter to everybody, <laughs> like, so many times. And, and you could see some of these revisions, right? And... This is interesting what Lord this is saying. We, 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 we should talk about this too, you know. Um, but she revised what she had to say to investors. And, you know, it's like whatever you have to say to investors to keep them in, at this point in the game, they're not going to get out. Nobody, if you're in Peloton from 80 and 90 and you put your whole fucking net worth in it, what are you going to do? You're going to sell it now? You're not going to sell it now. It's going to either zero. Or you're gonna find, or you gonna you gonna deal with it on the way, or whatever the case is, you know. So, uh, Lord, this is saying when when women make mistakes, men pile up on them. When men make mistakes, people don't react the same way, you know. And to that, maybe maybe there is some some validity in it. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. You know, I personally had to had to come out and say some things to to the folks that are behind me. And that wasn't e those, those, those are never easy conversations, you know what I mean? So, is she getting piled on more than everybody else at this moment in time? Shit, I mean, CNBC has a segment on her every day, like, hey, how is Kathy Wood doing? <laughs> hey, is she still alive? You know, and they'll always use those words and shit and be like, you know, what is she gonna take? Her whole portfolio is X, Y, and Z or whatever. Um, Do you want a quick tip on psychology? Well, of course oh. we are. That's what we're here for, bro. <laughs> Fucking turn off CNBC. <laughs> but, but, Yo, hey, I'm not kidding. You know what? I'll Could tell I... you the one main reason to turn off CNBC. Ever since that damn Super Bowl with Dr. Dre and all them dudes performing whatever the fuck on that damn <laughs> halftime show. Every fucking commercial is da 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 da. It's the motherfucking, but they don't say the words, of course. They don't say the fucking words. It's just that damn song, man. All of a sudden, the whole catalog came back, and they're putting it on CNBC for every break, man. I can't take it, man. I can't take it. I haven't watched but, CNBC in in years. Well, good. Not, you wouldn't straight know. up. I haven't. I haven't watched it. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, you guys, I just want to touch on the fact that the markets don't really distinguish between gender. You know, that's the, true. Market doesn't care. Market doesn't care, and so money—the money just goes where the money goes. And so, assigning a gender label or bad or good is is certainly the media's job, or and or if you're the wrong person in the wrong place and you get a, you know, you get caught, and then other people assign a gender to it. It has <clears throat> nothing to do with gender whatsoever. Right. And remember, and, we're in the middle of it, so PLTR right. could double from here, and bam, she's back in the green. Right. It has nothing you know to do I mean? with he or she. It's almost as though we could be woke and say they. Right. It's just like the whole narrative about feminism and money to me um, in regards to performance in the markets. The markets don't care about gender. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a loaded conversation that will probably get run over, you know, because we're not as woke or as educated. I mean, we spend our lives trying to trade, not deciding if our investment is good or bad predicated on gender decision making. Yeah. And I, I agree, Lord, this like, you know, she's saying that gender is not a factor in trading, but it has right. to do with class and respect. hundred yeah. percent. There's a different world in which women yeah. exist. A hundred percent perception yeah. wise. There, there's yeah. no question there. Yeah. So what she's facing with now, she doesn't even give a shit. This woman is that badass. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit about any of this stuff. She doesn't give a shit about what people are saying to her. She never gave a shit about it in the first place. You know <laughs> what I mean? So. You know, so if anything, she's a great freaking trader 
you know, that just sticks her head down, does what she does, and eventually she'll come out on top, man. You know, right? She doesn't have a stop, right? That's her thing, and she has to be long. Right. Right. Yeah. She doesn't have a stop and she has to be long. Exactly. You know, Lord of this is saying no one wants to be an asshole. I don't know, man. Every woman I've been with has called me an asshole since the day that my experience with women existed. And so, you know, shall we? I don't know. Shall we move on? Does, does, yeah. uh, what you got? What do I got? I got, uh, you know, did, did it take Putin to break the Fed? Oh. You know, was that. <laughs> Was that, oh. did he just wait? Did you see, have you seen the chart that shows that he divested in 2018 of all, almost all of his U.S. debt holdings? No, so he's but been, of course you saw it. Can you post that? Do you have it? Uh, I do have it. I can, I did don't you, know how to post it. Did it's you see on, it in 2018 or just, did you see it now? No, oh, come on. That's uh, no, I, I saw it. <laughs> Here. Here. Can he, I can, can he share I can move the camera. So you can see my stuff, but here is. So did that ha did that happen before? Oh, okay, look at that. Whew. U.S. debt owned by Russia. Right. Holy okay, shit. so you see that in 2018. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see how long he's been planning that. Oh yeah. But why 2018? Well, he went into Crimea underneath Obama. Okay. Right, and then Trump came in, and he was like, "Maybe I just cool my jets." And then Obama's, then Obama's second fiddle guy, Biden, comes in and he's like, now when the Fed's cornered, right, with high inflation and they've, they've pumped all, think about the leverage, right? The leverage rates were monster. Mm -hmm. Remember, we saw how levered everybody was right before this? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so he's like, okay, well, everybody's levered. Crude's jacked. Jacked. Right. And that's what I thought he that was going to become part of the geopolitical conversation, some kind of game on oil, price of oil here. And then I thought that was going to be I thought that was going to become a game here. But again, like I don't I don't think in those terms, Katie, how does that how do you because because obviously you keep abreast of, of, you know, the political conversations and, right? and like the meandering you... here between both parties or whatever. But how do you relate that to you as a trader? How do you actually feed it in to decision making as a trader do you yeah sure you do right i mean they're the biggest actors sure so, where's china at in relation to that chart well ch here's the story with china the chinese papers newspapers came out today and said that taiwan was still a part of sovereign china in the case of the ukraine and its separatist breakaway regions mm -hmm. there was there was a problem with sovereignty, but in the case of Taiwan <clears throat> and China, this is a Chinese newspapers were saying that there is no problem and that it was just a matter of time. Specifically, that was their exact words. It was just a matter of time before China is reunited uh, and the pr uh, with Taiwan and the present political structure. And they use the word eradicated. So, man. So we have to, you know, you have to ask yourself, as Ben Hunt said, he said, why am I reading this now? You know, if, if you can watch the, the Ukrainian people or and or the Soviets run through, run through the Ukraine, then why wouldn't China be emboldened and actually look at this as an opportune time, given that the Fed is handcuffed, the price of crude is here, the political situation, even NATO's divided, right? And so, you know, you have to, but to, to answer your question as a trader, you have to understand that there are big actors involved. And so if you're trading, you know, big positions or longer term positions in wartime, you, you have the ability to get destroyed by people with a political agenda. You guys remember when oil went negative at $39 a barrel or whatever? Yeah. Back to mama. Go on. Yo, you could so one, one of my boys who worked in, in Dubai, you know, he made me put an oil trade on, you know, at twenty three dollars. Twenty a U.S. oil was at twenty three dollars or something like that. And I put the shit on. He explained to me geopolitically what was going to happen. Like, you know, I, and I forget. I forget the rhetoric that he used, but some of it was like, you know, they're going to make the 
make the, 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 the price of oil go down so that Saudis will have to cave into X, Y, and Z contract, something like that, right? So I put on the, the short, I put on the short. And a couple of, like a week later, it was working, right? I'm up, you know, we're up like 100 grand. It was working. Uh, like a week later, Trump comes out and says something about oil. And there was a squeeze right before that dump to negative territory. It was a squeeze to like $28 a barrel. I booked the loss, right? We go right back. We go right back. And he was telling me, oh, it was just a head fake. It's just bullshit. And after that, we went negative on it. It would have been a fucking $10 million trade. And he looked at it from a political standpoint and figured out the trade. Me, I had no idea what the fuck. I tuned the fuck out. You know, when somebody speaks politics and all that kind of stuff, I tuned the fuck out. When Katie was just speaking about Ukraine and China, what did I do? I tuned the fuck out. Your dog, your dog, Ron Cheryl, happened to pop up at the time <laughs> where Katie was talking about some political shit. And you lost, you lost, totally. you lost, I was like, you lost concentration too. <laughs> so fuck, man, Pol politics, it still to me rubs me that way. But after that trade... There's obviously something to it, man. Yeah. There's something to it. Politics have the ability to move prices. I right. didn't make up, right? Politics really have the ability. It started in the 87 crash, right? They decided they were going to tax credit card transactions with an additional credit card tax. That was that. Biden. No way. Yeah. That was Biden that did that, right? I don't know. <laughs> I think that was Biden's doing. I swear to God, I think I that believe was Biden's you. doing. I believe you. But uh, so, but the point is, to for uh, Luch, the point is, is that um, Victor Sprandio, Trader Vic guy, was like political decisions back in the in 1985. He was like, look, political decisions can really move prices in the markets. Huge. Yeah, man. And I'm just starting to get tuned to that. I, you know, what I always envision, like myself as a trader. The guy who would only come in maybe twice or three times a year and make some and make some bets because he saw something. I remember you telling speaking, us that story. Politically speaking, <clears throat> or, or something, right? So back in November, when Homeboy was like, "All right, these rates gotta go up now. <laughs> like, we can't hold this shit. We can't hold this shit." And everybody was still denying it, still denying it, still denying it. And then there was that one Fed meeting. There was that one Fed meeting. Where we just exploded off of it, meaning exploded to the downside off of it, because the news, you could no longer disagree with what it was. And regardless of all the head fakes, regardless of even if Russia was a conflict right now or not, or Ukraine was a conflict right now or not, we were going down from that motherfucking moment on, you know? And the guy who just comes in at those moments and makes those trades, you know what I'm saying? Versus sweats it out here every day now sweating it out every day i'm not saying doesn't doesn't have its its fruits but you know sometimes you struggle with this shit you've been through this stuff so much you want to figure out the best way around it right ranchero you created the strategy that you have because you needed to figure out the best way around it because you kept yep. you kept finding those moments those resistance points that would just smash you in the face yes and you're like yo i'm done with this i'm done with this i'm not gonna play this game like i like i continually played it before yep and that's when you decided, all right, I'm making a fucking change. Yes. You know, and whatever that was, boom, it worked for you. Yep. You know, so I continue to say that I'm going to do this shit. I never actually fucking do it, but <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, Chris, big picture question for you. You've got okay. Russia that's doing that. You've got China doing what they're doing. Is there collusion, do you think, between the two of them for them to be able to at some point – steal As everybody what, what right we it. have and, and put it into their corner. I mean, everybody that's, that's ultimately how conflict breaks out globally, right? Is theft. Isn't, isn't that what's happening here? China has more to lose by ditching us than it does by and aligning with Russia. So it's unlikely that we'll lose the Chinese um, versus the Russians, right? That si Russian, the Sino-Russian pact or whatever you're talking like mm -hmm. is, is probably unrealistic um, given that the Chinese, uh, like I said, the Chinese have more to lose. But I mean, I can't predict the future in regards to this. And, and as you see, right, like even today kind of was caused by Putin saying that they're activating weapons that have never been activated before in, in regards to the scope. And things like that. And then today on Fox, our, our generals came out and said that they're not ruling out 
or somebody from the defense, no, I'm sorry, a, a senator from Mississippi came out and said he wouldn't stand in the way of a nuclear strike against Russia on television. And that's, so, that's a that's a that's a very big statement. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. So I, you know, I don't know what's up uh, politically, but I just was trying to sh- tell Luch, pay attention to the politics. <laughs> you see what happened? You He's see right? what happened? Yes, yeah. pay Again, attention. It happened. It right? happened. They're over here looking at girls on Instagram over here. <laughs> right. Get to us. Come Get on. Get to Get to us. Yo, sa- yo sabia. This is fucking guy. Right. But you so, see, you see, it happened again. It happened again, man. Right. Look at that. And I did it on national, on live TV, TV right here, right. for everybody to see. <laughs> Fuck, man. It's just a natural subconscious reaction. And then you know you get in those arguments with family and shit when you go home and stuff, and then you talk about politics and shit like that, and then people just get mad at each other. And then like, let's just talk about the last two years. I've lost friends over the fact that I didn't put a fucking mask on and I'm not vaccinated. I have lost friends over this shit. Yeah. People like literally were like yelling at me, yeah. yelling at me. And they're still I'm, not and they're still not your friends, right? And they're still they, well, I mean, I don't I don't know. What is a friend these days? Kim, what is what is a friend these days? <laughs> a friend. Let's there's a great question. A friend is loyal. A friend, <laughs> if someone talks shit about you at a party, a friend backs you up. All right, all right, all right. Right, a friend doesn't sleep with your ex-girlfriend. That's why he's not married. You see, Rancho, we see, we getting all the tidbits. We're, get, we're, we getting, get, getting, somewhere. we're getting, getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Right? We're getting them right here. This right? Shit. A, friend, <laughs> a, a friend will will um, will pick you up after a bad day of trading, right? Like, like I lost, I lost all my stuff windsurfing and, and in a big day on the ocean it just got swept away from me and i came in and i called my friend in hawaii who's a pro and he he said to me that happens to everybody <laughs> it's just like, thank you that's a good friend <laughs> when you uh, say windsurfing that's not kite surfing that's the that's the, that was the precursor to wind uh to kite surfing right it's where we hold on to the boom which is you hold on to, to it right where the kite is in the air right in 80 feet in the air yo right? francie yeah, Katie he's a, does. Uh, yeah, Katie he's does a, windsurfing. He knows. He does the board. Yeah. The boring one. He said you bored. <laughs> see, the twenty six. You see, you see, you see. You see Young what Buck is there? fired up over you there. You see what just happened right. there? You see? It's this fucking arrogance. <laughs> Jesus. This youthful arrogance is like. <laughs> You gotta do the one that's with the kite, not the one. Motherfucker, he knows that. He (laughs) just talked to him. Get out of here, man. Um, So, yo, um, when you have, like you said, you had a bias, Lucci, you said you had a bias today to the long side coming in, right? Like when, when, just drawing it into the relationships with other people, like when you have a bias, like you see these people with those vax and mask bias, you can't get, how are you gonna ever convince them not to be vax biased or, 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 um, you know, mask biased. You can't, right? You know what came to my mind just there when you made that correlation? That if you tried to tell your significant other that, like your wife that, she would be like, no, it's different. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So it's another reason why you're not married and don't have kids. Right. You know but I mean, I mean, even in ourselves, like you try and get yourself out of a bias. It's really hard. It's so difficult, man. It is so difficult. I feel like traders are are better at it because we have to. It's part of our job. Mm-hmm. But in real life, if you were to equate, if you were to make that correlation, it takes people years to get rid of a bias, bro. Yeah, Jace just said uh, some people just aren't wired for it last what, time. Of what? Changing bias? Yep. Meaning, meaning, I mean, everybody. Everybody understands it in their own way, right? To me, chaos is the only is the only factor to me, right? Because if you hold I'll on to your it. bias that long and you can't let go, there's only one thing that can help you separate it from it, right? It's chaos. So you bring that back to the market. <clears throat> Case in point, what we're seeing right now, you have people that are so biased to everything going up. It works in so many ways, man. And it all comes back to these same central points but i feel like nobody wants to admit 
how similar all these things are. Hey, read Lord's comment right here on the chat. Top, okay, just right so you there. Got, uh, bias is a form of identity, which screws everything up for the person, right? So you, okay. So her point is, is that you make it a part of your identity. You, it goes so deep that it is now you, right? So you can't even envision another world that is not you. You believe that's you. Whatever bias it is that you have. Now you might have a bias to your fucking dog, to your, you know, your significant other, to your kids, you know, whatever it is. It's ironic. I'm having the same conversation with a very close friend of mine who went through a, a bad breakup, and she's she's at the point where she can't even, she can't even like eat. She can't eat. She can't. She can't see anything past her bias. And I know the solution is straight up non-attachment just once your mind switches and realizes it doesn't need that anymore and you're good you're okay then life is fine right but how do you get a person to get over that shit the typical so that they can the, see the other side the or typical way is through pain yeah through pain. exactly exactly dude so i've cried myself I? to sleep for two fucking years what are you talking about so right? who am i to come in between you and your pain right yeah right who am I to come in between you and your pain? But when you have such relationships with people and they're looking to you for advice and all this kind of stuff, what do you, what do, you do if you understand chaos, pain, suffering, bias? And what do you do if you're at that point of understanding, right? Because you can't just deliver that information as is. They'll look at you and be like, you know what she said to me? She said, that stuff that people, only rich people say. <laughs> She said that shit that only rich people say because they've gotten to a point where they don't they don't need to deal with regular shit. You know what I mean? That's only stuff that people say who have made it. I'm like, "What the fuck?" <clears throat> no, like this shit is for everybody. It has no it has wor rich people are even worse. They're even worse. They're even more biased. They're even more, you know, attached to whatever the fuck they have. You know? So how do you even help somebody like that? You can't do it. You can't do it. But these are your loved ones. So what are you going to do? Are you going to turn away? No. It's like compassion and empathy, right? All that usual um, woo-woo magical you know, stuff that, that leads to comforting them, perhaps. But like you say, you right? see how he said that, Ronchero? You see how difficult <laughs> it was for him to say that? Perhaps. Right? It's like com comforting them? Perhaps. Now, the, again, again, we know now. We just know now. All right. He ain't married. He don't have kids. <laughs> It just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but how Yo, do you right, these, uh, how do you these, comfort somebody in pain? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking make know. them laugh. A dark humor. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it, man. We should have been doing this podcast a long time ago. I'm go. <laughs> Shit. You, you gotta come. You gotta come on with us more often, Luch. <laughs> I gotta drink a little bit. Shit. That's fine, right? Um. All right. Oh, let's we... let's wrap it, you guys. It's been an hour. You want to wrap it? All right. Yeah, an hour. <laughs> don't want to. You don't want to get people too bored. I don't know. I I think they're pretty entertained here. All right, guys. <laughs> let's uh let's let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up with something, man. You gotta have something, Katie. Okay. I mean, you started us off with this colloquial. Friggin mono <laughs> monologue. No, no, come on, right? Just went oh, oh. straight to some shit with. Just give us, a, give us another one of your Katie tales. Okay, the Fed has created a monoculture of people who can only buy the dip. Yeah, well, we know that. Yeah, right. So, I mean, what are, are they ill prepared for the realities of the markets in front of them? Probably. Yes. Are we entertained with it? Do Do you guys feel Do you guys feel better about yourselves? Now that you see them writhing in pain and shit, or do you? I'm just... not paying attention to them. I, all I'm all I'm doing is is looking at it from a standpoint of when when they're finally either in so much pain that they capitulate. I, I know then it's it's finally my time to be able to step back in, but that hasn't happened yet. So I, mean, I don't that's... I don't look at it in in terms of gee, are you doing okay or not? I look at it in terms of when's Trading. it my turn. When's right? my when's my game? Ron exactly. Cheryl plays a solo game, man. I like that. <laughs> Both right. of you guys play a solo game. I like that, man. 
you got to think, was... right? Like the pain involved in all those other sell-offs was so great. People were moving money out of the United States. People were worrying about the solvency of, of the banking yeah. system. Yeah. Right? Like we're yes. not even close to that yet. And I mean, they can't find a bid here. All right. All right, fine. I'll end it with this. Okay, this is perfect. <laughs> Let's hear it. Perfect. Let's hear it. Answer this. Answer this fucking question. Okay. okay. Is crypto un-American? And it, and is is crypto un-American basically, and a, and a mockery to the to the to the current financial system? Is it is it un-American? Are you are you being what what is the word? You're being a uh, 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 you know in the pirates and shit. You're being a uh, insubordinate uh, or something. Yeah, like, an, uh, something like that. You're Anna. being you're being un-American. If you're if you if you're invested in crypto, are you un-American? Answer that question. No, you're just trying to make some money. <laughs> I mean, it says Mr. Trader over here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Philosophically. That's capitalism, is it not? I mean, things change. Isn't I agree that, with Isn't that. that American? I agree with that. It's pretty American. Katie? I, th I think the Fed has failed us. And I think that any, me any measure of investment around which the Fed has no control is, is wise and, and should be pursued. So the people that tell you that you're that you're un-American and you're betraying the country because you're you're involved in a monetary system outside of the dollar and the dollar was backed on you know everything American or whatever to and gold people, and gold and gold and gold what do you say what do you tell them? same thing that you tell somebody who tells you to put their mask on I don't think you need to tell them what your position is damn that's a great answer Again, unmarried. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't tell a shit. And right, and I think if someone asks you a question that you're not comfortable answering, I think you ask them a question back, like, "Why are you asking that question?" All right, all right, I'll rock with that. Yeah. Hey, thank you for coming on. It's so cool. Yeah, to Luke, see that you. was great. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, and let's do this again. Let's get some other guests too. This will be fun. All right, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Later, guys. All right. Have a good one. Peace.